Salutations, everyone. Welcome back to Victoria 3. I'm Lord Fortwards, and we are continuing the tutorial let's play with Hudson Bay into Canada. So at the end of the last episode, we annexed lower, uh, Upper Canada, or rather confederated them, to be fair. Um, we're still losing money, unfortunately, but that's just the way things go. Um, but overall... We're doing much better than we were before. In fact, all of a sudden now we're actually not as broke, which is great. So we're building and we're still making money, which is perfect. And we're about to get some whaling going. Oil is pretty well useless at this point, but the meat is half decent at least. Um, Let's see. We're going to keep working on production. don't think we had any changes. Nope. I think we're good. We have 20 months until we can confederate another Canadian province. And also you'll notice that we did not manage, in fact, to completely colonize Manitoba. The U.S. raced in and did so, which is going to be a problem. Uh when it comes to actually forming Canada. We're going to be... We should have just enough to form Canada. Canada. I think we will be given enough control. But the reality is, I kind of want to get back to the normal Canadian borders, which means we're going to have to kick the U.S. out of both Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. Which is going to be difficult, because, to put it mildly... Their GDP is, well, 10 times ours, and their population is more than 10 times ours. Thankfully, as we confederate and grow, that will be, that gap will narrow significantly. So right now, we're just continuously building up the level one of all our resource buildings, um, wherever we can, just to make sure that our population has places to work, and we can adjust for any goods changes in the market by having the buildings in place. Therefore, if, for example, iron prices spike, the iron mine will reopen. If we don't have the iron mine built, though, it, if iron prices spike, we won't really uh, be able to take advantage of it. So by spreading out our resource buildings to some degree, we can adapt better to changes in market prices, especially since we're part of a huge, the huge British market. We'd almost be better off if we were independent, but uh, for now we're going to take advantage of the nice cheap uh, British goods. And I think I'm actually going to throw down a port here just so we can get away from this trade routes need convoys problem. Because right now we're negative 28. Speaking of which, we could see about setting some import, uh, import export routes with America going. I think we're already trading with them. Oh, we could trade some fertilizer with the Americans. The uh, reason I'm looking at America here is because it will not cost us um, envoy to trade with them. Convoys, sorry. Can we I'm just gonna see if we can trade anything with Mexico too. Although I do have to be careful up here because it does cost us bureaucracy. Oh, we have some inactive trade routes. Oh, all of them are inactive. Oh, it was still costing us convoys. That's a, or whatever. That's annoying. Oh well, we're making money, we're building up, there's not much else we can do at this point. Um, I don't think we can throw down any degrees, oh where well, we can, a decrease. Our laws are, well, in decent shape, but I think we're going to move to freedom of conscience. Mainly so that we don't get swamped by, uh, 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 non-Christians swarming into our country. Not that we have anything against Christians, but what we want to do is try and limit the amount of nations that can move to our, 
our, our rather limit the amount of populations that can move to our territory. Otherwise, we'll run across the problem of we're already sort of having it here. We're having a large amount of peasants, but we just can't keep up with building buildings to make sure that they stay happy, which means over time the radicals will grow. This is a problem with most late game countries in this. People create all these nice liberal laws like um, no racial segregation, no church penalties, no migration controls, and it adds to the point that uh, you just get way too many population in your made too much population in your lands, especially if you have uh, social security going, it will bankrupt even the greatest power. There we go. Now, hopefully it gets changed later on by the game creators, but for now, we have to deal with it. And more importantly, just trying to get them all to our state religion will keep things a little bit more under control. People actually want to go back to a monarchy. We can't do it, sadly, because we're the subject of another nation. And we're a chartered government. A chartered company. Not that it really tells you what this does for you, which is kind of annoying. <clears throat> Music to my ears. We can either fund these people or not. We're not. Mainly because we're still in debt. Sorry, drink of water. Um, we should be able to get another confederation, right? Yep. We got the Columbia District. Nice. So now we need to obviously go through and build up all their stuff. As well as Washington, Oregon, and uh, Ohio. So even though the U.S. has messed up our borders, we've messed up their borders. And now we can throw down another colony in Ohio to finish off the Nimipu. I don't know how to say it. Uh, more Native Americans there. We have five of the eight needed regions to form Canada. One, two, three. Hopefully that will be enough. Then we will have to see about it. Looks like the U.S. is currently beating up Mexico, which, to be fair, is not going to be hard. 25 versus 86 plus 452. We'd have trouble fighting them with our 19 plus 9. But uh, thankfully, we're protected by Great Britain right now. Although, I'm not even sure if Great Britain could win that war. Maybe they could. After all, they just, the last war between the U.S. and Great Britain was the War of 1812, which the British pretty handily crushed the U.S., so there is that. Um, I guess we'll just keep working on production methods. We don't have enough to try and do anything super advanced. At some point, we're going to got to get uh, some universities and stuff going. But for now, we'll just stay with what we got. Although I do want to make sure the land we took over... Okay, there are no subsidies being paid. Um, for those of you learning the game, be very well aware of the fact that the AI sometimes will start will be subsidizing buildings when you confederate them, and that stays. It's rather, rather annoying. Um, you know, I think we could justify building another construction facility. Oh, we have no population there. Let's throw it down here. And we are 21 months away. You'll notice our GDP is rapidly growing now that we've started to annex people, as well as our population. Still a long way to go before we could ever mess with the U.S., but oh my gosh, that border gore. Who took a bite out of uh, Utah? It really looks like someone took a bite out of it, doesn't it? Let's see what other weird things are going on in Europe. Looks like the Ottomans are crushing Egypt. Good for them. Of course, they've probably already triggered Sick Man of Europe, right? Or Dead Man of Europe. 
Oh, nope. They still got a little bit of time left. The Qing lost. It looks like they fought an opium war with the British and lost Nantong. Um, Japan is still, well, doing its stuff as the Shogunate. Ooh, we got an event. Gold Rush in British Columbia. Spread the word, everybody. So let's take advantage of that. Grass is greener on both them and Yukon. See how many people we can bring into British Columbia. When I was playing um, this in preparation for the guide and this Let's Play, I managed to get like 200,000 people moving into Nunavut, which was hilarious because it only had like a population of 40,000 when it started. As it is right now, people want to move to British Columbia. Which is good, because we need the population growth. We've got some pretty decent growth. We can't which. Um, let's pass private health insurance. I'd like to do public. Oh, let's try public. If it fails, we'll go with private. Ah, the Anglicans are dissatisfied with the industrialists being part of our government. Judge not that ye be not judged. Scold them with religious scripture. Best way to annoy priests in your government. Okay, now that we've got two production areas and we're on iron frame buildings, we actually build at a decent pace. Obviously, we have 219 weeks left. We are seven months away from unifying another region of Canada. I suspect, since the only one's available, we'll get Lower Canada, which, considering their GDP is not keeping up with ours, but certainly growing, that'll be good. Speaking of which, we actually have a war. This is actually a good thing, because it means we will uh, finish these guys off sooner. So we've just raised... The general, giving him troops, and we're sending him to the front. Uh, let's make sure he actually has decent troops, though. <laughs> yeah, uh, not having a being away from line infantry, being stuck on line infantry can have problems. So we'll still win um, once the war starts. Our wars. War goals are to annex them. They've got zero troops. Unless they back down, there'll be a war and we'll win. To arms, to arms. Nobody joined our war to help, which is a little annoying. Not that we needed it. Backroom dealings were exposed. Such is the nature of politics, and now we're going to scrap public and we'll go with private. Unfortunately, those penalties are just so huge a lot of the time. You just can't do anything. Oh, I should probably say I want to annex them. And in other news, we have the ability to increase our education. And we should... Well, once we can fit all those, technically we could start trying to colonize elsewhere in the world. What do you say we go to Africa as uh, Canada? Um, oh, South Cameroon is still available. We'll go there. Once we get our interest established, we will head straight to South Cameroon, which is arguably one of the best places to colonize and still open. Cool. Uh, that actually justifies an expansion of Colonial Affairs Department as well. And civilization, civilizing mission. And where's our government buildings? We're going to up that a level. And just like that, we're becoming a colonizing African power. <laughs> uh, let's throw down a port here, though after the government administration. Just so we can start bringing resources back to Canada. 
some point, I want to make sure we get higher and higher education levels. Focus on establishing health care. Plus 50% enactment chance? Yeah, I'm going to date that. I think that's the largest enactment chance I've seen in the game. I haven't gotten that one before. Okay, that should solve some of our bureaucracy problems, right? Yeah, good. Now we'll build that port. And it's getting close to the time. Wait, Yukon is unhappy. What's going on up in Yukon? Ah, there is no um, stuff for uh, rich people to do in this government. So let's throw down a... Um, government administration, which will give the aristocrats something to do, and hopefully will prevent them from being as unhappy. So, as you can see, we're getting a nice colony speed in South Cameroon, but these other two provinces, due to severe malaria, aren't doing so hot. Plus, we also just don't have a large population. Another confederation. This time we got Nova Scotia. But we didn't get Lower Canada. Okay. That's fine. Thankfully all developed and everything already. Healthcare was passed, which is good. Still like to do public, but for now that'll work. We'll switch to propertied women if we can. Be a bit of a reformist. Um, you know what? It's 12 per level. We could do a huge boost there and a decent boost there and still have authority. But I also need to make sure I have integrated my states, which I haven't done. Ah, knew there'd be something. Uh, we're going to need another government, ad another two government admin buildings there. Because currently we are going broke. Again. <laughs> You'll notice there's a pattern of going broke as small countries. At least we've never defaulted, right? We'll just get the UK to pay off our debt periodically. Oh, uh, there's another huge British conquest. Don't think we... No party changes, which is fine. Look at how fast we're colonizing. The downside is Great Britain has arrived, and they colonize just as fast, if not faster, than we do. That's annoying. You know what? We're going to scrap these colonies down here. Reason is that we'll speed up our colonization up here. I don't think we'll be able to push out the British because they have so much faster growth than we do. Um, actually, we have faster growth than they do right there. So we might. Hysteria in women. Oh, no. Uh, we tried to pass it, but it turned out we failed. Um... Okay, devout scandal, force the guy to step down. And we are just waiting on 18 more months. Oh, come on. This is where I wish you could direct your colonies, because if it, w if it went down here rather than north, we'd actually start cutting off the British. <sighs> oh, well. You know what? We really shouldn't even be researching Civilized Mission. We should be doing these other ones. Yeah. Let's get Psychiatry, at least for now. It's a shame, but we're going to have to deal with the fact that the British are probably going to out-colonize us in Africa. On the other hand, we're at least going to gain access to some rubber and other resources.
Now, I'm not saying what I'm doing in each of these buildups is ideal. There are more optimal strategies, but they get a little complex. So for now, we're just going with pretty basic strategy as Canada. And it should show you that Canada, um, Hudson Bay, whole affair, uh, that's fine. Whoa. Okay. That's freaky. Boy, Africa looks weird from the top down. Side view of Europe. I didn't realize you could do that. That's pretty neat. Uh, let's turn off some of these decrees. Grass is greener. And grass is greener as well. By the way, if you right click on stuff, that will give you the ability to access stuff on them, which is kind of cool. If you want control of stuff like improving relations. Oh, looks like we have a war between Prussia and... Oh, between Prussia, Russia, and Sweden. Interesting. They want to conquer Hanover. And they want to liberate stuff. This is going to be a big war. Hmm. Who's going to win this? I would say Prussia, but it's less cut and dried in Victoria 3 than it is the other games, and they are outnumbered. Really depends if Prussia can sweep and take Hanover in that area before Russia smashes them in the east. Uh, we should check up on our buildings. Yeah. Okay, so we got a choice here. We can switch to nitroglycerin. Gain more money. On the other hand, we start killing off our engineers, laborers, and machinists. I think we've got enough population to do that. Uh, make sure all our other camps. I need to check, make sure there's no subsidies. There aren't. Good. I was playing as uh, Prussia the other day. And I formed Germany, and I didn't realize that when I confederated Bavaria, first off, I didn't put it in a state, but also Bavaria had subsidized literally every building of their lands, and it basically just killed my economy uh, until I caught on to that fact. Build another government admin building. What's costing us all this cash? Government wages. It's the government admin. Uh, there's not a lot we can do about that, to be honest. Oh. Gold mines in British Columbia are depleted, so now we can actually build mines there. Sorry, gold fields are depleted. Now we can build the mines. Um... Hmm. Look at how fast the British colonized. Like, I was hoping we'd push, cut them off, but ugh, no luck. On the other hand, we'll be able to start colonizing further inland soon. I'm not going to start the colony until we finish off South Cameroon as much as we can. Try and gain as much land before the British. Um, we can cut them off from this area. It'd be great. And finally, we have now confederated Lower Canada. So Quebec is entirely ours, which means culture, Canada, we are still shy on what we need. Which means we are going to have to declare war on the U.S. to gain Manitoba. Ugh. Not looking forward to that. On the other hand, despite having a population that is one-third of the U.S., our GDP is merely one-fourth of the U.S. So, progress, I guess? So, let's see. What else can we build here? Um, textile mills looks productive. 
We could work on a motor industry. Glassworks is always good. Furniture is always good. Just keep an eye on everything. Are we going to beat the British here to the last area? No, looks like they're going to box us out. That's annoying. Oh, actually, no. It's going to be close. We're going to actually cut them off. Somehow, we were going to be we're going to beat the British in colonizing South Cameroon. Quite a race, though. Quite a race. There we go. Okay, next colony. Um, let's see. We have severe malaria there. We have severe malaria there. I think we go down first. Not worry about the stuff on the coast for a while. Gold rush in the Yukon. Okay. Free technology, always nice. Hopefully the Yukon's in less turmoil now that I gave the aristocrats something to do. They're not just sitting around being nobles all day long. We need to throw down a consumption tax. I hate doing it, but we need to, because otherwise we're going to go broke. Okay, so the next thing we either have to do is build the Canadian Pacific Highway or plot to invade the U.S. Which means I think it might be time to actually start investing in a military. I could start incorporating South Cameroon, but I don't think it's worth it. Anyway, I think we'll stop this here and we'll continue next time in the hopes of building up to fight the U.S. Fingers crossed. I'll see you guys all then. Bye for now.